very sensitive place and there, there's nerves in that place and there are blood vessels uh, that could be with, with, with just one wrong stroke of the scalpel you could cost this patient his life. We, mo most people, most people don't understand the peculiar psychological situation that this unprecedented circumstance of our history put us in. And then when you put on top of that something that people believed was the cure, and they had really, you had dope fiends who quit heroin, cold turkey, same day. No, no, uh, you, you know, those effects, are, you know, withdrawals, all that. Because they became a part of the nation of Islam, coming under the influence of the honorable Elijah Muhammad. And now Imam Muhammad has to come and tell these people who have seen those urban miracles happen among them. He said, you know, what you got is not the real thing. And then he has to do it in a way where the people watching him say, okay, you're bringing them Islam now. And then what he brings them, and they're judging what he's bringing to his patient on the table, and they're saying, bid'ah, bid'ah, bid'ah. And he has to keep on working, and then you got the, the same Negro that you're operating on, who will walk away from you and go follow the Arab the way that he followed the white man that he that the first operation was designed to save you from a white slaver and then you turn around thinking you done got free from the white slaver and from the black slaver and you go to an Arab slaver thinking that now I got the real thing and the imam had to stay focused I know y'all prefer me to talk rather than read, but I'm a guy, I, I got to keep reading. So we keep listening. Okay? So, so during, this, during his lectures, Imam Muhammad explained that though there was never a change in Elijah Muhammad's spirit, his language and emphasis changed, especially after he was released from prison in the 40s. He and many others were incarcerated with him for refusing the selective service of World War II, despite the fact that he was over 40 years old at the time. Elijah Muhammad's language continued to shift emphasis according to the prevailing climates of society until the 1970s. The focus had totally shifted from a spiritual emphasis to a business emphasis. The Imam explained it this way. He said, so the emphasis changed when Elijah Muhammad got out of prison. He said, we have to build something. He said, we have to do something material. He said, his message, he, he, this was his message when he came out of prison. He said, we have to do something material, leave a material model of accomplishment. And he was correct. He came out and he changed his emphasis from a savior has come, which was emphasized up to that release from prison around 47, 48, 49. Excuse me. Losing my place here. It was the new language. My words now. It was the new language and new emphasis that Imam Muhammad was blessed to bring to the following of the Nation of Islam in the 70s and the early 80s that made their great conversion and transition possible. The language was what facilitated their re-entry into the normal world. The Imam said, quote, so the emphasis shifted from the spiritual community to a business-minded community, and then after that change, I came into the picture. There was no more change of emphasis until I came into the picture. When I came into the picture, we went to language, to tackle language, and to bring a new language environment that would make it possible for us to move into the world of people, of human beings. Praise be to Allah. Allah bless us to be successful. We have done that. We have successfully moved from one language environment that was designed to contain us until we could get help into another language environment that was designed to get us out of that prison into the normal world and we thank Allah that we have succeeded. Let me step away from the quote again, just one quick. Listen to that. Listen to that. The Imam said he's given, that his goal was to give us a language to move us out of that language environment into the normal world. I guess really, I, mean, I guess it takes a little more meditation or reflecting on it. I think, it's, I think we understand that, you know, we weren't normal. 
We weren't normal when they made us Negroes. Then we weren't normal when we came into the nation of Islam and were believing in Yaqub and the mothership and all that. That also, you were normal. You made abnormal from that normal, from the old abnormal, right? And now he has to bring us out of that. And the goal is, the, the Imam said, the goal is to make you normal. And we mean normal and natural in the best, in the best sense of it. And so, so, listen, Imam Muhammad's success is seen when people <laughs> under that teaching and instruction behave, listen, normally. Do you think that some of the people that we have to work with in our community, that ain't normal. It's just not normal. And do you understand that until people really embrace Al-Islam and really embrace the religion, the, the imam is like, uh, what, can, what can I say? It's like, uh, you know, you, you ever, your, your, your battery ever, your battery ever quit on you and, and you know, what do you, have to, what do you have to do sometime? I guess I can go to the man for this. You, you, you have to jump, you have to jump. You open up, you open up the hood and then you look, you look at the battery. Uh, what, what, really, what's the first thing you check if you want to know if it's the battery? What do you check? You, you want to see if you cables and then what are you, what are you looking for? I'm getting more answers from the sisters and brother. <laughs> Bismillah. Mm -hmm. mm. That's what I'm looking for too. You got it, sister. But corrosion. Corrosion. So there's a way that the battery is supposed to operate, but if it's got corrosion on it, then you got to clear that corrosion off. So when you got, now, when you put the battery back on now, in relation to the way it was performing before, yeah, maybe it will do a whole lot more. But in reality, when you get that corrosion off and then put it back on there, what is the battery actually doing? It's just doing what's normal. <laughs> it's just doing what's normal. It's not like you put some NOS in the engine or something, you know, nitrous oxides or NOS going to go so much faster. What I'm saying is, listen, we're going to build the, the Ibrahim Kamal al-Din Islamic Center. We're going we're gonna to build the, we're going to build the, uh, uh, we built Masjid Wadah the Deen Muhammad. Built it. But do, you, do you know that among other ethnic groups, and it's not all just pure racism or anything like that. That's not just the reason why. Do you know that one person, one family, will build a, a center? One family will build a facility like this? And it, 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 it won't take a whole community of pressure and what have you to, to get it. It's normal. It's normal. And that capacity to do that is in us naturally. We have so much. Do you understand that you have cosmic power? I can talk about something. I talk about something that people just say, I mean, he, ain't, he ain't with the language. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> I don't know if I even say this. Listen, who 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 who's who's ever heard of, who heard the term superposition? Who knows about superposition? Anybody know about superposition? Okay, now there's nobody that knows about superposition. Okay, who ever heard the phrase quantum physics? Okay, good. We heard some quantum physics. I won't I won't I won't go there because actually I did uh, I did 33 lectures on that on 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 this subject just to walk up. One's called intentional creation, the other's called coherence, the science in Islamic unity, right? All grounded in, in the Quran, etc. What I'm trying to say is this. Some people think when they practice the five pillars of Al-Islam, they say, I, I got my deen established. No, no. What did the prophet say? Buni al-Islam wa al khams. Buni al-Islam al khams what does that mean? It means the foundation is the five principles. Okay, what if we just had the foundation and then we don't have the walls, the carpet, and then, 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 then. Finally, yeah, we had the masjid is established. And you got a slab of concrete out there. 
See, we think that when we do the basics and fundamentals that we've done the biggest thing. You've just done the basics. The Imam said, you need to have the five pillars of Al-Islam established in your life in order for you to be human. We are just, we're not going to solve it all today, but, but I'm, what I'm saying is you have so much untapped power in you that you have been freed to gain access to that these things that we are striving and we have to continue to strive to do the way that we have to strive to do because that's where we are. But there is power to leverage our individual and personal potential that will one day amaze us. It one day, one, one day, well, it'll, it'll amaze us now, but one day, as you say, about the 25,000, one day it become, that's normal for us. We are so much more powerful than we know. And the religion and the freedom that we have is so much greater than we've grasped. And that's, what, that's, my, that's my imploring. Let me see how many, how many more slides I got for you here. Because when the imam says to free you to the normal, to, to the normal world, he said, I want you to be free to access and express your innate human potential. See, Imam Wazir, two degrees, working on a PhD, businessman, family man, Imam of two masjids. You know, it, it's like we're amazed. That's just a man expressing his potential in freedom. He's, he's an example. And he's an exception. But that's not the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> he's supposed to be normal. But we, have, we, we, we do have to accept the fact that certain, just certain people are just are quote unquote exceptional in, in that regard. However, until we embrace and tap into that nature that Allah has given us, because the religion has been given to us to give us all that pleasure that satisfaction, that achievement, that accomplishment. And so I guess it, all, it, all, it, it does all go back to how much faith you actually have in what you claim as your way of life. How much of the Quran and the life example of Prophet Muhammad have you internalized and actualized? That's what, that's what makes the difference. So I'm I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna continue uh, here and inshallah close this out. Which one are we on here? That's the two thousand. Yes, that's it. So the Imam says, "I came out with tools that nobody before had, that nobody before me had, nobody had before. I began to work with these tools to get you to move in the direction of the vision." And with the mercy and the help of Allah, he gave me those tools and that vision, and we are here today. The perception of Imam Muhammad for language was the language is, was a form of life carrying a form of life. Consequently, he worked through the vehicle of language to progressively inject new life through a new vocabulary into his community, like gene therapists inserting genes into an individual cell and tissues to treat hereditary diseases. By replacing deleterious mutant alleles with functional ones, similarly, Imam Muhammad, through his work with language, replaced the deleterious terminology of the Nation of Islam with functional ones. For Imam Muhammad, language was the life that, just like people had a life, in his frame of reference, all words had a career or a lifeline just like people. Thus, a term may have a good birth but then change and have some negative connotations which were not manifest at the beginning. One small example of his translation of the Arabic term khutbah, which he explained at, during the Ramadan.